Hey, Internet. Hello, that's, Internet. That's right. That's a logo. Oh, God, I got to turn this down. That's a logo I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, that studio doesn't yeah. exist anymore. Mm. Does indeed. Wait, long what time. galaxy is this? Wait, a long time ago? What What are we playing? Holy I... shit! Is it, is it Star Wars? <laughs> Da, no. da, 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 no, Zach, we're we'll getting in trouble. <laughs> Wait, no. I don't want to get okay. sued Just by Warner Brothers again. Make it funny and then it's parody. Da, 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 uh, there's a Death Star. There's a. It's yep. Star Wars. It's still Star Wars. It's Super it's Star. Still, Wars. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's. Um. Yeah. So they. Uh. Death Star happened. Uh. They hire Kyle Katarn, who's the most badass badass ever. Uh. He. Uh. Is he's great with all the guns. Doing, um, but he only needs one, right and he knows everything about the Empire for some reason. And an intimate knowledge of Imperial methods. He has. He's intimate to, knowledge to, of the to do quite Grand Moff before. Actually, fun thing I've read. I've read the Dark Forces novel. I own the Dark Forces novel. Uh, really? I never owned yes. it. But I believe I've read it before. I, I I've I was unable to track down. There's like three also. Novels. It's interesting that you mentioned Grand Moff. Grand Moffs. Uh oh, maybe I'm thinking of a different guy. Yep. Grand Moff is just a, a imperial title. Idol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a there's a because there's a there's a guy in this that has a name that sounds like that. Oh yeah. No. All right. We got the Star Wars pan down. We got the ship flying in. We got yep. A super pixelated planet. And then after that, we get another logo. Uh, yeah. Star Dark yeah, Forces. Yeah. Title. Worse. <laughs> Star Dark Forces. Worse. <laughs> that is, that was a good game. Good game. Oh, what? Oh that was, man, that was, that's how old this game is. They're showing the credits at the beginning. It was credits first. Just in uh, case you missed them here, though, they also showed them at the end. This is oh. this is some great LP right here. This don't you just love <laughs> scrolling? <laughs> Actually, what am I talking about? Yeah. The the highlight of our one of our most recent LPs is just scrolling names. We. <laughs> Gonna... Starting you off with a bang here, folks. <laughs> yep. Also, interesting to note, I actually do have some commentary on this game from Justin Shin, who was one of the uh, who was one of the leads uh, mentioned at the top of the credits. Oh, cool. Oh, really? So I have a little bit I have a little bit of commentary on varying things from him. That if I can find all of it, I will read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the voice talents of Nick Jameson, Julie Eccles, Jack Angel, Peggy Roberts Hope. It's a great name. Nick Jameson, and Denny Delk, and Scott Lawrence. Denny Delk is apparently a multi-talented person. Yeah, no kidding. Yes, he can sound like many different in- uninteresting people, such as a stormtrooper, <laughs> an imperial officer, an imperial commando, some other guy that gets shot by Kyle Katarn. Oh, uh, di- <laughs> dying Rebel. There was Dying Rebel on there. Okay, so okay. Spoilers, naturally. Spoilers, I guess. There's going to be a rebel. And also, spoilers, die. Darth Vader shows up in this game. Oh man, Dude, that we're should be to... on a, That should be on fucking. I like that there's show. package design, package cover, package cover back. <laughs> CD ROM disc art. Oh god. Oh wow. There are five yep. people that worked on the package for this there game. Are, there are two people that worked on the that wrote the manual and one guy that designed it. <laughs> These people were good at their graphic designers. No kidding. Yeah. Maker and utility. That I know what that means, but it's just a really funny title. I want to know where I can get that job. Where can I get the job writing game manuals? Go back, go back to 1992. Profit. I mean, you can. I mean, if you have a writing degree, you can get you can get a job. If you have a writing degree and any amount of technical know-how, you can get a job writing any kind of manual. Yeah. One that's... of my friends who's really good at uh, is uh, does isn't even that great at writing, but he knows a lot about um, about AutoCAD, and he actually uh, both wrote the manual and narrated the DVD for them. <laughs> the I just El Guru Tim Schafer. <laughs> yeah, just to rem- just to remind you that Tim Schafer, just to remind you that yeah, these guys went on to be Double Fine and a bunch of other studios. Mm-hmm. Yep. Star Dark Forces Wars. Oh, oh man, here's the best part of any game. New Enter name. Our name. Ugly Hi. Jeb. Mission so, Secret Base. 
God, this so is... we get to name our agent despite the fact that the opening crawl specifically says we're Kyle Katarn. Right. Yeah, well, we get to name an a- account. I know it's a pro. It's effectively a profile, but so here still. we go. Yeah, first mission: we're stealing the plans for the Death Star. Oh man, we can't even get voiceover mission. Ugh. There is cutscenes between between some of them. Loading also, mission. I mean, you have to admit that this is a pretty oh, cool God. way to do a first mission. Steal the plan for the Death yeah, Star. I just like that. I just like that. But like like all of the principal characters in a Star Wars game, like. Kyle, we'll, we'll soon discover in 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 the rest of the Dark Forces series that Kyle Katarn becomes sort of a Mary Sue. It becomes and sort of. I'm questioning that. Okay, yeah. So the first mission is Kyle Katarn goes in and steals the Death Star plans from a secret base by himself. So yes. we have this we have this well established already. Yes. Yeah. Although well, I guess it's I guess it's really their fault for leaving shield generators that are compatible with whatever his shield belt is everywhere. Well, so, I just, yeah, I, he's just picking up batteries. You know, it's just batteries. Also, this is giving me such flashbacks to do. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't know if they'll bring it up in this game. But isn't it like like because of what happens in the movies? Isn't it revealed that this is like a setup anyway? Because it leads to them. Finding, yeah, it leads to them you know, get it, finding Leia. And, yeah, it, and, it's all it's all a trap anyway. Like, I guess but, yeah, it's just a trap that backfired in the most beautiful fashion. And, also, and, and, can I say the controls for this game kind of slippery? Oh yeah. Well, maybe, welcome maybe to Doom like era shooters. Yeah right. Hey, you in a circle? Good job. Matt. Well, this is from this is from uh, like 1994. The PlayStation came out this year. Yep. Yeah, but this is still Doom 2 as hell. Yeah, I will say it has a couple of things on Doom and Doom 2. Um, you can aim up and down, and it has it has maps, it has a PDA, it has a lot of objective things you can do with the function keys. Mm-hmm. Um, I will also say that I think Marathon came out around this time, and that actually yeah. had full that actually had full mouse support and let you aim up and down and stuff, and a lot of other cool things. It didn't have the Marathon didn't have jumping. Oh, does this have actual jumping? This has actual jumping. Press spacebar and you jump. Cool. It also has running, which is a thing I don't discover until level ten, where the level is where the level is impossible to win if you don't know how to run. <laughs> literally, there is there there is a, there is a running jump you have to make, and the only way to make it is to sprint. Oh. So yeah, first person platforming. That's uh, it's, it's super not intuitive. Right there. <laughs> What is that stormtrooper doing? He's just standing in the corner. Yeah, you'll find um, the the AI for this game is actually pretty good for like when you compare it to like Doom, where enemies would just like run at you. Mm-hmm. Like enemies in this game, if they can't if they can't immediately find you, they'll walk to a they'll walk to a place that where they have cover from you. Interesting. Um, they and if you like hide behind like if you hide behind a doorway and like try and wait for them to like come out so you can shoot them they'll wait for you that's pretty like they'll get it they'll get into positions where they can where they can fight you accepting a couple of accepting a couple of very rare circumstances that's that is pretty good ai for this time yeah you need to try and make this oh made it without this friend Yep. Dude, this music's going nuts. Can I just say? Yes, it's great music. Oh. It's it's actually, and if you notice in the credits, uh, this music actually is uh, uh, composed by John Williams. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they mean that he composed the original music and this is an arrangement, but I don't see anyone else I... that has credits for the music in this game. It looks it they looks just, to me. They just came to him on his on his off day and he shit out something Star Warsy. <laughs> It looked to me like they were crediting him for the original one. It might be that just the, uh, that, yeah, they're leaving the other stuff. They're leaving the others uncredited. Yeah, because I'll say, like, some levels, like, for the most part, this music is, like, action-y enough and, like, makes makes plenty of sense for, like, a shooter. Um, even if it is, like, incredibly intense at times and sort of, like, overplayed. Um, but there's also levels where, like, They'll play stuff that doesn't make any sense for it. Like, one of the levels, they play the Imperial March. <laughs> nice. Which, like, okay, I, I see what you're doing there. I don't understand. It's, it's, a, it's a slow, it's a very slow piece. Look, they decided, somebody decided, this was before, you know, there was really much for cutscenes, so 
somebody some producer decided is like this is star wars we have to have the imperial march in there somewhere i mean so there actually are like full cutscenes in this game that are like fully animated and like and uh voiced i'd like to point out that we grabbed the death star plans and it was completely anticlimactic yeah uh, no you grab them and kyle says oh man that was easy time to get back to my ship peace out yeah no that's uh, kyle katarn for you so don't give no hey does this game go into Kyle Katarn's backstory at all before this? No, uh, Dark Forces 2 gets into it. Okay. And he becomes a very different character in Dark Forces 2. Yeah, it does. Okay, because as you, I suppose we'll... Also, look at the, I like that there's there's no way to actually end the you have to... You have to... Plans to the Rebel Alliance. Oh so god, that's right, I think it took me for, well, I, I played this game once, and I, I think that took me forever to figure out, I was like, what do I do here? <laughs> what do I do? Why won't the level end? Then also, like, yeah. uh, in between this, Star Wars happened. <laughs> the yeah. entire Star Wars movie happened. All of Star Wars. Darth Vader! Darth Vader's bridge! Darth Vader's board. Yeah. The Emperor Fat man. Your test demonstration, General. Hmm. There we go, General. Mark. Sweet rotoscope, bro. No subtitles, Matt. For sure. There's no, yeah, there's, there, there's no subtitles in this game. <laughs> the setting. Just as we did the Jedi Knights. At last, the Emperor's war will be filled only. So that's he's a Grand Admiral, judging by his tags. They called him General. General. I hope the demonstration oh. lives up to your claim. Then again, this is written by Justin Chin. With pleasure. That's weird. Because <laughs> well, I guess I guess he is Imperial Army. Then this was probably a when. When did you say this game came out? Nineteen ninety-four. So this is probably before there was a lot of interchecking between various Star Wars things for a lot for heavy continuity. Oh well, man, so Dark Troopers. This... Yeah. All right, so Zach. What, my understanding of Dark Troopers is that from the canon like, that I've read... this troop deployments? <laughs> yeah, that's super awesome. They uh, just... There's eight of them, and they hit the planet in random spots. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was just them immolating in the atmosphere. Somebody <laughs> fucked up. Uh, yeah, no, my understanding of canon Dark Troopers is that they are part of a special force designed by Vader to create force-sensitive stormtroopers that were like shock troopers and like special commandos. Is that your understanding? I have literally no understanding of them. The only things I know of them from are this and uh the fact that Thank they're a special Commander, unit type the they're like one of the unit types in the, the battle game. Uh, they're also in um the uh, rts the that was the that was like a space combat and ground empire combat war. empire war yeah yeah they're a special unit for the imperial in that and okay, here's uh also that there's dang rebel but is that that's that admiral akbar I, no, it's, it's, it's dying. It's dying rebel. It's a random. Oh, that's Calum. dying rebel. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Katarn is not amused. <laughs> I like that he wears battle. I like that he wears body armor and then a leather jacket over it. <laughs> His fucking face. It looks so great. It looks like it could be a normal imperial attack. <laughs> Yes, it's a normal Imperial attack, except for the fact that it's not. That all we discuss here is classified. This Imperial officer... Also, I like that he gets a personal briefing from Mon Mothma, the leader of the Rebellion. Yep, that too. I was gonna mention that. It's like, dude's a poor... She, she also gave him the mission to steal the Death Star plans. A new type of stormtrooper. Yeah. Look, you need... I suppose you, at this point it's like connect it to the movies in any way you can and show up any like cameos you can get without having to pay big bucks to have somebody come in. Yeah, I mean yeah, to have a, to have a mercenary. It it makes kind of sense in that he is like essentially a special operative for them, but he's just a hired mercenary, so I, I don't know. It's weird. Like, he even says, like, man, dark, man, dark troopers, I should have kept working for the Empire. 
Then I would let Jen also, Jan Ors changes a lot in Dark Forces 2. Thank you, um, and may the force Jan Ors. Remind me who Jan Ors is. Uh, you'll see a picture of her coming up. Oh, okay. I thought that was. She doesn't do. She doesn't do a lot in this game. She's your. She's your mission officer. Yeah, I was thinking. Um, Zach, who's who's the uh, the one general that leaves because oh, Garmbel Ilblis. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, uh, the guy who has problems with um Odana, or no, he has problems with Mon Mothma, and so he leaves, and he's part of the recovering the dreadnought fleet in the um in the Thrawn books. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. Oh, also, like, do you guys do either? Of you guys know anything more about Crix Medine? Because he's kind of like an important part of. This I game. do actually. Crix Medine was a. Uh, Crix Medine was another imp- was an imperial. I don't know huge um, huge huge amounts about him from ever, but if I remember right, because he was also a character in the Rogue Squadron games eventually. Yeah, that's right. He's on, and he, I believe he, he does. He eventually shows up in some of the novels as well. Uh. He's an Imperial, like an Imperial, I don't remember what his rank was, he's but a, he defects from the Empire. And yeah, he's a, the, he's a colonel. Is he the A-Wing guy or is he the Y-Wing bomber commander? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say A-Wing because I, I think that's what he... Yeah, because uh, I was going to say he's... that's what he, what he pilots when you eventually like get him out of there in the mission. Yeah, yeah, and in Raid Squadron, he's the A-wing commander at the um at the base, the where they. Tra- that, oh, that that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's a he's an Imperial uh, fighter commander that defects at some point during the, um, I think probably after the Battle of Hoth. Well, so they yeah. So in the canon of this game. He defects. He defects in the course of Dark Forces. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That's, then uh, we, when you guys were talking in the other cutscene, they said that Crix Medine was was looking at defecting from the Empire and was to, and had given them some information on a new type of stormtrooper known as the Dark Trooper. Huh. Okay. So that's what he goes. Because I know th- does so. Will you actually do like a mission related to him? I the guess we'll guy? see. Okay. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin you guys on the rich, complex narrative of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Would be a shame. Yeah, also, the first couple levels are before I learn like half the controls for this game. Good. So I don't know that you have a flashlight. I don't know that you can aim up and down. I don't know how to turn on the map. <laughs> I don't know that weapons have an alternate fire. Although for the most part, that doesn't matter for most of them. <laughs> it's okay. You can just mow everyone down. Yeah. Um, oh, also a thing uh, that said um, the gun, the, the the gun that I'm not using too often, but is uh, Kyle Katarn's primary weapon. Uh, they just call it a blaster pistol, but it's apparently a uh, in the game it's referred to as the it's referred to as the Briar pistol, which according to Justin Chin, uh, he got the name from composer Gavin Briars, who he liked. He just like the name of and it sounded good uh he says that it is a briar rifle with the with the barrel and muzzle shortened so kyle katarn basically took a took an antique blaster rifle sawed sawed off the barrel and put a pistol grip on it but that makes that makes no sense it makes no so sense so if you look at if you look at the Briar pistol, you notice that it like like how the like how the the Imperial blaster rifle has like the weird heat sinks around it. You mm-hmm. can see the modified barrel for the Briar for the Briar pistol also has like a heat sink that's like a big like copper coil that goes around it. Yeah, but I'm like, not sure. Like I'm uh, guessing that's like the whole purpose of the of because as aside from. I, I don't I don't know enough about Star Wars tech to know how to know how blasters work because I'm I'm guessing the they're I don't a, know why they they're a they use a chamber of plasma that is that they fire I think yeah I think, it says, I think it's superheated plasma and that's why it's not an actual laser rifle because it, it's firing bolts yeah of it's it's apparently a coherent packet of intense light energy called a bolt yeah is and that's that's why. 
they're not lasers and why they explode and why you can see them, right. etc. And they're slow and etc. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're slow enough for yeah you'd be able to see them and the like, and it makes sense because in every material I've seen, there's always some kind of energy pack. Mm -hmm. It's it's never just ah, it condenses energy or what have you. Yeah. So like, what is the so like what is the point of a barrel on a blaster rifle? That's that's the thing. It's like. The only point of a barrel on a blaster rifle would then be to either be extended heat sinks or, um, uh, like a, a gas trap, like you get on, um, tank g cannons. But that also doesn't make sense. And, like, the only thing I could think is so that you can fire a higher charge bolt with the extended heat sinks. I but then I mean, I guess we can we can step out of character and say they have. We can step out of character and say they have uh, barrels so that they look like guns. Well, yes, yeah. obviously. Like, they, they I would do. say also probably aiming purposes for actual longer stuff so that you can actually aim down the barrel and figure out what you want to hit. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely like the only the only comparable thing I can think of is the is is like the Star Trek phaser which every iteration looks less and less like a gun and yes. similarly I don't know how you aim it at something cuz the one in next generation looked like a TV remote <laughs> uh, I think I just committed the cardinal sin by talking about Star Trek and a Star Wars reverse thing it's all right there's not a lot of exciting things going on right now. We're just kind yeah, of... Yeah, well, there's a lot of exciting things, but none of them are, like, worth commentary. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Kyle Katarn shot the third guy in the room. And then Kyle Katarn shot the fourth guy in the room. And then he picked up a shield. Wow, there's just... Is that just a skeleton there? Yeah, because this is... this is. Yeah, because this is uh this is a rebel base that recently got hit by dark troopers. Yeah, we're cleaning. Oh, okay. Remember when? Remember when? Uh, Imperial forces shoot at the heroes. Yeah. They get kind of burned, but when they shoot at literally anybody else, they turn that's into the... like charred skeletons. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> also, where did that stormtrooper come from? Also, I like that blasters can uh, char people, but when you shoot these guys, they just fall down and and die like. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't understand how. I don't understand how blasters. To be fair, I think what what it's supposed to be is that in the first movie, when Luke's aunt and uncle are killed, they're like, like the, they're they're shot, and then everything is like the entire burned. yeah yeah, yeah. The, the entire place is burned to the ground. Is what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be. Well, it's and I guess like. Fire. So I guess it kind of makes sense, like how much damage is here, because it's not. Because all this damage is supposed to be from dark troopers alone, right? But and the dark trooper weapon is the dark trooper. The dark trooper weapon, um, which we'll see later on. Actually, we'll see it in this level, but it's like a cheap sprite. You can't see it, but it's like a shoulder-mounted. Uh, it's a shoulder-mounted plasma auto cannon that also shoots rockets. Oh yeah, that's right. It's like the craziest thing. Yeah, uh, no. What, what, what doesn't make sense to me is why are all these imperial people still here? Like, uh, so the thing that the thing that Jan Order says is they're cleaning up after the op. Right, but how did you get here so fast then? I, I don't know. They, they. We had well, I assume we we were tipped off that they were doing a thing by Crick's mating, and then yeah. we arrived. Uh, okay. We did. We didn't arrive soon enough to stop it, but we arrived during the cleanup. As I guess. I guess. So then, yeah. what is the point of this mission? Uh, you're trying to you're trying to recover any evidence of the dark trooper because right now all we know is that they exist <laughs> and they're really bad. Yeah. Gotcha. So this is a reconnaissance in murder. It's a recon. Yeah, it's a reconnaissance mission. Can't you tell from how stealthy we're being? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just. Uh, I will say that there's, a, there's a mission I do later where Jan says, uh, where Jan tells you to use stealth and not to, not to fight your way, not to just shoot your way in. And I tried using stealth, and there is no way to actually use stealth. Like, <laughs> I tried sneaking around and like only punching guys to not get everyone's attention. But like literally, I, I think, I think it's, I think it's in this, I think it's in this recording. It's like, it's, it's, it's one of the earlier levels in the game. Where, like, I try to run in, but, like, 
everybody sees you, no matter like what you do. There's no way to sneak around in this game. There's no, yeah, there's no stealth. This is a little before stealth mechanics became a thing. And... Also, uh, this yeah. is uh, this is these. I'm glad that they programmed these guys with stormtrooper aiming. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, there's also, like, it's, there's it's, like, it's funny because my doom instincts are showing. So I'm like, don't step on the blue stuff. Don't step on the green stuff. What are you doing? You fool. So there's the Briar pistol. Ah. Uh, you can see all the weird wrappings around it, and for some, yeah. and it was a rifle because it has like the, the it takes the energy cells from a blaster rifle. Except not quite, because Imperial officers also drop the same energy cells, and they only they only have uh, they only have pistols. Well, also, I, I don't know why I, there's so yeah, many I, officers here. I think the idea is that it uses the same ammunition and the machine like the the type of gun can pull a different type of charge yeah because when you use the pistol it only uses one round of this ammo but when you use the uh the, when you use the uh blaster rifle it uses two rounds per shot so the question then is that why does the uh those blaster ammunition fit in kyle katarn's blaster uh I would, I would venture to say, I believe that it's actually a thing in Star Wars that almost all types of things that use blaster bolts basically use a universal charge pack. That's, uh, that's so dumb though, because like, except that, yeah, that, I mean, he's that would that would be like the easiest thing for the Empire to do to deny the rebels access to weapons is like force them to not have compatible ammo. I mean, I, I mean, I guess, like, um, I mean, it's like at the same time how a lot of like, uh, if we want to, if we want to take this real world, it's like how a lot of guerrilla groups come into AK-47s and tons of ammo just because it was like, it was there already. Well, yeah, but that's because like Russia fucking spat that shit out like it was candy. Like, uh, I mean, I guess like, but the the thing is like, the the problem is is that. In canon, there are a significant amount of rebel-made and alliance-designed weaponry. And in some cases, they utilize imperial weaponry, but at, at some point, there is going to be, like, just ba based off of how, like, warfare works. Like, at some point, there is either going to be a point where the rebels are producing their own weapons, or they are just losing so, why the well, Empire wouldn't try and make that fat? I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, I guess the other thing is, is like how I mean, but you have to remember this is a this isn't like a this is a rebellion. It's not like a war that's been going on for ages. It's like, and, and I'm I'm like in our like did this did our civil war go on long enough that there was really distinct differences in the weapons each side was using? Yeah, no, that's true. It's and it's also just, also we'll point for, also for we can stuff that moves at hyperspeed rates. Like you'd think that I don't know for and with I mean, fast we, and light communication available. Yeah, we, we could know. also we could also consider the ramifications that the rebel the rebels defeated uh, the empire by blowing up the Death Star and killing the emperor. Well, yeah, no, for sure. Like I am just there's a there's a lot of like. There's, there's a lot of other things we can take a look, we can take a cold hard look at in Star Wars. I know. Actually, well, actually, if you read, in the corner of the books, that that didn't actually defeat. It was a huge victory for the rebels, but it's actually quite a while before the Empire is in a yeah, state it, it, defeated. It, they're like they're dealing with the Empire for quite a bit longer after that, even though they have like in that, canon, sort of it takes the upper hand. It takes even like even more than capturing. Coruscant before they're able to like actually supplant yeah. the Empire, and that's you know, fuck, that's like what six books into Rogue Squadron, which is yeah, you know, a, a shit ton of content after um, yeah, that's uh, Empire Strikes Back and or not Empire, uh, Return of the Jedi anyway. Yep. <laughs> 